Hi, this is Frank with a Frank Opinion. My fellow Americans, what are we thinking? Over the last few weeks, a number of people have been trying to warn us about the eventual takeover of our country by socialists. Donald Trump, a couple of weeks ago, said that under his watch as president, the United States will never have socialism. Wayne LaPierre, the executive vice president of the NRA, responded to the mass shooting in Florida by stating that moving towards gun control and common sense gun safety legislation would be part of a slippery slope towards socialism. Jamie Dimon, the CEO and chairman of the board of J.P. Morgan Chase, who never saw a citizen-funded bailout that he didn't like, in a letter to shareholders said the following, when governments control companies, economic assets, companies, lenders, and so on, over time are used to further political interests, leading to inefficient companies and markets, and enormous favoritism and corruption. Seems to me that Jamie has this backwards. What we have been witnessing for the last three, four decades is gradual corporate control of our government, corporate control of our elected officials, most of whom are completely indentured. And I put down over here Wolf Blitzer. Wolf, in an interview with Bernie Sanders, referencing the fact that Donald Trump, who I refer to sometimes as the bad seed, said, Ask Bernie, would you be able to guarantee to us that if there is a Bernie Sanders in the White House, that there will not be socialism in our country? Our country will not become a socialist country. Okay, Wolf Blitzer, uh, who in comparison to standards of journalism produced by the American Press Institute, is so far away from being a journalist that I don't know why people even watch Wolf. So given the way my mind works, I decided to do a little math. Democratic Socialist of America, and Bernie Sanders refers to them as an organization that he's part of. DSA has a total of 50,000 members, between 40 and 50. There's a small party called uh, the Socialist Party of the USA that have a very small number of members. I researched it on the internet. It's somewhere between 1,500 and 1,600. That's the estimate. But DSA, which by the way is not a party, it's an organization, has between 40 and 50,000 members. I then decided to do a little math since I liked it in the third to the fourth and fifth and sixth grade. And I said, DSA, 50,000 members, divided by the number of registered voters in the United States, Republican, Democrat, and Independent. And I came up with this figure that I can't pronounce uh, in terms of what it says, except for saying it's 0.00025%. And I know uh, for a fact that that's extremely small. Democratic Socialists of America divided by our military, the strongest military in the world. And that's 2.3 million uh, individuals in the military. Uh, that includes reserve uh, forces, about 800,000. And we get 0.024% if we do that division. And then I decided, well, the NRA, it's got 5 million members. Good guys with a gun. 50,000 DSA divided by 5 million, and you finally get something that I can pronounce. A hundredth of a percent. Seems like the DSA are somewhat outmatched. Every once in a while, an organization does a ranking of the world's happiest countries. And we're not on this list because we're number 19, and we're actually in the process of falling down even further. The first 18, and here they are, number one, Finland, their happiest punch, Denmark, Norway, Iceland, Netherlands, Switzerland, Sweden, New Zealand, etc., you can read them, England, Ireland, Germany, 
Australia, Canada, all happier than us. They all uh, have one thing in common. They all have universal health care. And they, some of them have had it for decades. And they've never, once they had universal health care, ever repealed it. Because they like it. They love it. A lot of these countries are parliamentary republics, democratic parliamentary republics. Some of them have social democrat or democratic socialist parties. But none of them are purely socialist in the manner of the description of Jamie Dimon that talks about failed states that have first become socialist and then authoritarian and that have controlled corporations and so forth and so on. None of them. They're happy. And I wanted to kind of give you today's fact bomb. As I indicated in my last video, I'm going to be doing these every once in a while. Well, today's fact bomb is as follows. Between 1963 and 1968, at a time when we were fighting communism, 1968 is the year preceding the greatest level of military force in Vietnam, 550,000 American soldiers strong in 1969. 1963 is a year after the Cuban Missile Crisis. In between, that's the middle period of the Cold War, making sure that communism doesn't flourish. Russia was our arch enemy at the time. And during this period, lo and behold, we had the most productive legislative history in our legislative sessions in our history. We produced over 200 pieces of legislation for the common good. And in that time we had Medicare 1965, Medicaid 1965, Head Start 1965, the greatest investment in an elementary and secondary education yet seen was during this period. Civil rights, consumer and environmental protection laws, immigration reform that opened up our immigration to not just whites, but non-whites as well, people of color, people from some countries that the bad seed in the White House decides to call shithole countries. We did this during this time. It was a good time. We introduced great things. And guess what? It did not lead to socialism. We don't have a socialist country. There was no slippery slope. This is like 50 years ago. The people that are promoting this idea that we're going to turn ourselves into a socialist country as Bernie Sanders or one or two or five or ten or fifteen for that matter, democratic socialists get into Congress, they are not your friends. Look at what they stand for. DSA, if you look online, their three main goals are Medicare for All, a return and support of unions so that workers are not uh, abused and taken advantage of by corporate, the corporate sector. And the third one is involvement in electoral pro uh, processes in the United States. They are an organization, not a party. We should have no fear. Don't buy into it. When you have Zoltan and Yadranska over for dinner on Friday night, tell them about this error in our country's history that produced all these things. And guess what? We didn't become a socialist nation. Thanks.